Welcome back to AP Chemistry. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, a few remaining ideas with uh, acid-base titrations. If you've never seen an acid-base titration or don't know what we're talking about here, you might want to take a look at some of my previous videos where I actually demonstrate an acid-base titration from beginning to the end, and where I also talk about how we can take uh, strong acids and strong bases and titrate those, or strong bases and weak acids. Those are two separate videos. Well here we're going to take a look at uh, a very special type of titration. You know sometimes we prepare a solution of sodium hydroxide in the laboratory and we want to know what its concentration is. So probably the easiest way to do that, or the, the simplest way to do that maybe, is to use what's called a primary standard. Now a primary standard is a solid uh, form of an acid, and it is uh, usually something like what's called KHP, which is potassium hydrogen phthalate. And it has the formula KHC8H4O4, and we can actually weigh that out on a, on a balance, find its mass, and we can dissolve that in water and perform an acid-base titration against our unknown solution of sodium hydroxide, and we can find out the concentration of that base. It's a very straightforward and very common analytical procedure, and that's called standardization. So here's a good example of that. Let's say we have a chemist that weighs out 0.8296 grams of this potassium hydrogen phthalate, or KHP, primary standard, and dissolves it in water in a flask, and we titrate it, just like we normally would, and we notice that it requires 32.56 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution to reach the endpoint. So what is the molarity of our sodium hydroxide solution? Well, even though we don't have a whole lot of uh, too many numbers here to work with, we can solve this problem very easily. What we have to do is start with the, the mass of the KHP and of course convert that to moles. In any stoichiometry process, step one is always convert to moles. That's the, the most important thing to do. So we use the formula up here, KHC8H404, and we find that it's 204.22 grams in a mole. So we can convert that. And when we do that, we divide it and we find that it's um, 4.062 times 10 to the negative third moles, or 0.004062. And at this point, we have to realize that in an acid-base titration, that the moles of acid equals the moles of base. So if this number right here would be the moles of acid that we used, that KHP, well, that's also the number of moles of base that we had in the sodium hydroxide. Well, now we just have to take that number of moles and divide it by the volume. So we used, according to the problem, 0 0.03256 liters. And so we just divide that out. Take the number of moles of base that reacted and divide that by the liters of base that reacted. And we find that the sodium hydroxide is 0.1248 molar. It's a very straightforward process. It's one of the, the first things that students do in an analytical chemistry lab is learn how to standardize a solution of sodium hydroxide. It's, it's very important. Now, whenever we do an acid-base titration, it's important that we always use the best indicator for the job. And that's, it kind of goes without saying, you always have to use the best tool for the job. Well, in our laboratory, in our stockroom, we normally have several uh, acid-base indicators available to us. And you might notice that different indicators change colors at different points. And so litmus changes from blue to red somewhere around 7. And so we say that its pKa is 7.0. And the same thing with methyl orange. It changes from this yellow color to this uh, kind of an orange or dark orange color around 3.4. Its pKa is 3.4. And phenolphthalein is... Uh, somewhere around 9.4, as you can see here. Well, we say pKa because these acid-base indicators are actually weak acids themselves. And they have some optical qualities to them that allow them to change colors 
at different pHs. It's actually pretty neat how this works. So you always want to use an indicator that has a pKa that's very close to the pH of your equivalence point. Now, if you don't have all day to figure out exactly what the pH of the equivalence point is, as we saw in the last video, that uh, takes a little time to do, you can still figure it out pretty easily. So let's try this example. In the titration of a strong base, or I'm sorry, a strong acid with a strong base, which of these three indicators would be the best choice? Well, we said earlier on that if you have a strong acid and a strong base, what's the pH always going to be at the equivalence point? It's going to be 7, exactly 7. And so I hope you see that litmus is the best choice because it has a pKa very close, well, in fact, exactly 7. So litmus would be the best choice in this case. Now how about this one? In the titration of a weak acid with a strong base, which of these three indicators would be the best choice? Well, if it's a strong base and a weak acid, we know that the, the base is going to win out, so we would expect a, a, a pH at the equivalence point to be you know, a little bit over 7, maybe somewhere around 9 in that neighborhood. So is there, a, is there a, an indicator here that has a pKa close to 9? And I see that phenolphthalein is the one that is the best. And so phenolphthalein would be the best choice. There's an L in there. PHTH. Phenolphthalein would be the best choice for this, uh, for this particular titration. So remember, always use the best indicator for uh, what you're working with. If you were to ever have a strong acid and a weak base titration, then it would be acidic. And uh, at your equivalence point, you might use methyl orange in that case. So use the best titration or use the best indicator for your titration. Now, as we get to the end of this lesson, this, uh, these uh, three or four videos that we've uh, discussed here, uh, acid-based titrations, as you can see, this is a lot of information. There is a lot to do. Now, if you're getting confused by this and wondering, you know, if, if you have to prioritize, what is the most important? Is, is there something that you can leave out if you have to, if you're, uh, if you're perhaps not sure about some of these things? Well, the, probably the, the first priority that you would have is to know the titration equation. Know how to use MAVA equals MBVB. So we had that in some previous videos. Make sure that you know that equation and can use it. Also, you need to know how to recognize a strong acid, strong base titration when you see one. And if you can do that and write its net ionic equation as this, you know, H plus plus OH minus yields water, that is an, is an important thing to be able to do. If you can do that and realize that at its equivalence point, the pH of that strong acid, strong base will be 7, exactly 7, then that would be uh, very good to do. Now, let's... Now, sometimes there will be acid-base titrations that are not strong, strong. Sometimes there will be uh, acid-base titrations that are not uh, strong, acid, strong base. And in that case, if you have a strong, weak, a strong uh, base, weak acid titration, that is, realize that at the halfway point, pH equals pKa. And so if you can uh, find the Ka, or you have it given to you, you can just take the negative log of that, and that's a nice little shortcut for solving usually something uh, on the AP exam that has that on it. So those are the four main priorities, and everything else is icing on the cake. Hopefully, you'll be able to follow along with that and uh, get all of those questions correct. Well, I hope that you have learned something about acid-base titrations in this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up, and uh, I hope you have subscribed to my channel already if you haven't. Uh, my name is Jeremy Krug, and I hope to see you again on my channel or on KrugsList.org where we can learn some more chemistry together.